Hi everybody, so this is the first vid for hypothesis testing with the normal distribution. There's quite a lot of um, theory into it, to how it kind of works, before you get down to the actual doing of it. Um, it's good to kind of get an appreciation of what's going on by doing it. But once you kind of get used to it, once you've done a couple of them, they're really, really ridiculously straightforward. Right, so... Here we go then, so our first lesson on this. So this is something which comes from something called the Central Limit Theorem. Now we don't do it, it used to be in all the stats, and it's kind of like, it's the understanding behind why this works. So the idea is that the mean of all of this is the same of the, as the mean of these samples. So here you've got samples. So if you worked out the mean of this, of the population, and then you worked out the mean of all these different samples, so each one is a separate sample, so that's like its own little x bar. If you worked out an overall mean of this, the average is the same. So this bit, this is what this is saying here, that the, the mean of the samples is the same as the mean of the population. And the standard deviation is out by a, well, it's about, it's about by a factor of root 1 over root n. So you work, say, about the variance. So the variance is out by a factor of n. So when we kind of like, um, when we do this, the standard deviation of it, so I'll say like the population sigma will be the root, and it'll be like a sigma over n type of thing going on. I don't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> but the idea is it's the same. It should be the variance really in there. The variance over n. Yeah. So it's out by, by root n. It's kind of like it's, all, it's a background idea behind it. So if we had something which was x follows a normal distribution with mu and sigma squared, and you have a sample mean, so you know how many is in your sample, it becomes x bar, that's your sample mean. So there's a lot of bump here, uh, talking through it. So we perform a hypothesis test on a normal distribution. Now what you're trying to see is, is my x bar close enough to the population mean to say it's fine. So what you're trying to say is, is my sample mean, which is x bar, close enough to the population mean, or what you expect it should be, which is mu, to say it's okay. That's what you're kind of testing. Now, there's three different ways of doing this. There's using probabilities, there's using z values, and there's finding what they call a critical value. So I'm going to show you two of the three. Um, let's see how I do that. That's a, a little bit from now. Right, so let's have a look at this, this question here. So this is just setting it up first. So I know that x follows a normal distribution of 30, 9. So I know that the population variance is 9. So I know that the population standard deviation is the square root of 9, which is 3. Now it tells me there's a sample size of size 50. So I'm saying that n is 50 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transform this into the sample distribution. So you get x bar. Now the mean stays the same from the idea with the, the um, central limit theorem. And this becomes 9 over 50. So my sample variance is 9 over 50. So my sample standard deviation is root 9 over 50. And that's what goes in your calculator when you so I think these are just about 
couple of examples of that. So there's one there, and then top of the lap. So I've got my 60, 30, and then I've got my sample of 40. So my sample variance is 16 over 40. What's that? Uh, two fifths, is it? Yeah, 0.4. So my sample standard deviation is the square root of 0.4. There. Okay. Right, so it says the general concept of hypothesis testing. So we're saying here we, we perform a test to see whether the, the proposed population mean or a normal distribution of distributed population is correct or not. So in testing, I sample mean against what I think it should be. So it says we do this, collect a sample of size n, calculate the sample mean, and use this x bar to consider the outcome of the test. So we assume that we think it's normal, and you should say in the question that it's normal. We're always testing the mean, so we want to see if the mean is equal to a value or not. They don't tell us where that mu is 50 is from, do they? I think I just use mu is 50. Uh, they've got because they've got nothing in here, in here to say what we're doing here, have they? Uh, so we've kind of done like um, We've used that, that for, I guess, their original distribution was 50, 64. Oh yeah, look, it's there. Oh, you donkey. It's there. So we're seeing if the mean is 50 or not. That makes more sense now. Uh, we've got a sample size 16. So we work out x bar. So we've got 64 over 16. So you've got to remember my sample variance Is four, so my sample standard deviation, just keep an eye on the clock, is two. I found a room that's free when I am that has a proper recording thing on. So I can record for 10 minutes of your happiness. Right, so I'm gonna think about the 48. So we've got one here where x bar is 48. Is it close enough to the 50? Now, if you do the probability that x bar is less than 48, using the fact that uh, sigma will be the square root of 4, so 2, and mu is 50, you get that p-value. Now what that p-value is, that's the bottom 16%, so I'm fairly certain it's in the bottom 16%. And what I do is I kind of cut it off against either a 10%, so I say 10% is there, or 5%. So if this p-value is less than the 10% or the 5%, that tells me that it's too far away. So that's kind of what we're leading towards. So it says here, in this, if we think it's okay, we think the 48 is close enough. But it all depends on the value of your standard deviation. Uh, let's have a look at this next one then. So if I try 45 and I do the probability that x bar is less than 45 using the same values for sigma and mu I had before, if you look, this is the bottom 0.6%. So if I was testing it against the bottom 5% or the bottom 10%, what I'm saying is it's far enough away from the mean for there to be an issue. So we think with this sample, there's a problem. So it says that it's far enough away from the 50 to suggest that, that there's an issue. So let's have a look at this, like the 53. So the x bar is 53, but I'm looking for bigger than in this case. So the probability that x bar is greater than 53. So it gives me 0.0662. So this is the top 7%-ish. So if I'm testing it, so this one says here we're not so sure. If I was testing it at the top 10%, then there's an issue. But if I was testing it at the top 5%, then it's fine. 
So that's why the C is, is like a bit of an issue.